Okay, so in this here, we're going to go ahead and take this geometry that I went ahead and modeled, and we're going to texture it inside of a program called Substance Painter, which is a revolutionary new program that is basically just changing the industry completely, just like ZBrush did. This is basically ZBrush for anything that has to do with sort of hard surface modeling. And most studios are now adopting this uh, program. This program is free for education purposes. If you are an educator or if you're a student, for myself, um, I went ahead and bought the actual application. At the time, it was on sale for like, I don't know, it was like 500 bucks. But it's absolutely amazing. So what I did was I made uh, three pieces here that we're going to bring into Substance Painter. Each one of these has their UVs properly laid out, as you can see here. And in the midst of all of this, uh, we are going to create our ID passes before we bring it in. So if you take a look at each one of these pieces, I've assigned uh, Lambert materials with different color coatings that are very uh, rainbowish here, as you can see. And that's all something that I'm going to signify as masks that I'll be using inside of my uh, program Substance Painter. So if you take a look here, all I really did was right click, grab the face, and hit shift and greater than sign and keep tapping. And that way I got a selection here. And then when I did that, I just right clicked and it said assign new material and just assigned them uh, a Lambert and gave it a unique color. That's all you're seeing here. It's nothing too fancy. But I know that in each one of these pieces, I want to have these areas masked. So the way you can do that is using transfer maps. So I'm going to demonstrate just how to create a transfer map for one of the objects. And then I will do that for the other two objects from which we are going to then, in the next lesson, export the mesh out, and then we'll be going into Substance Painter and using these three maps to use for masking to create some incredible material surface texturing inside of the program Substance. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and take this file right here. This is uh, called a twist pipe. I also have my ground plane with my uh, shadow catcher material templated right now, so I can go ahead and turn that off or on. It is important to make sure that your geometry is kind of just slightly coming through here and touching the ground for the sake of uh, contact shadows and all that. So I made sure that every piece is there. I also took the liberty of moving a couple verts here in this geometry up and down because the ground isn't exactly perfectly flat. And I, just by moving them around, they matched up pretty good with the locators that I usually have in the scene. So the way this works, and it seems a little bit of a pain, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway, is if I take this piece of geometry, I'm going to go under my rendering tab here, and under lighting shading, I should say, uh, let's see, where is it? Lighting shading transfer maps, we have a input and output source. So I'm going to go ahead and clear all so there's nothing in the target. There's nothing in the source. So clear all, clear all. And I'm going to take this mesh here, and I'm going to put it into the target. It honestly doesn't matter which one is the target or the source. And then with this piece of geometry, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it, Command D. So now I have the second piece of geometry selected. And then I'm going to say Add Source to the Source Mesh. So you can see this is Twisted Pipe 1 shape. This is Twisted Pipe's shape, the first one. So there's really two meshes sitting on top of themselves, and we're going to go ahead and create a diffuse map. So currently I have the diffuse color map created, but I can also just hit remove map so there's no maps in here. And I'll click diffuse. And you can see the ball itself represents no shading, no lighting, no shadows, just the general color. So all we're worried about is paint uh, actually printing out the, the individual base color. So with that said, I want to make sure the file format is a uh, BMP. We're going to go to our Maya Common Output, and I'm going to actually bake these at 4096. The reason being is I find that any lower resolution can create a sort of in-between color uh, in the bake that can have problems with masking a little bit later. And the, the higher the resolution you have is the better. Sampling quality, we'll put this to 4x4. Four four. And let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put this to where I want to put it. So diffuse color map. I'm going to put that to my current uh, workspace root, which of course we know is our project set setting to undistort plate. And I will go ahead and call this twist pipe ID. You can call it whatever you like, mask, pask, or whatever. Um, and then of course hit save. For some reason it defaults to JPEG, so you have to come in here and just say, okay, I want this to be BMP. Got it. 
And with that said, everything is looking good. We're going to go ahead and do a bake and get a cup of coffee because this will take a little time. Also, if you seem like this is too long for you, um, you can go ahead and make a 2048 by 2048. That's fine if you're just kind of getting into it. I'm very picky. In fact, your, your map will actually be okay at 2048 by 2048. It just will take you a lot longer to obviously do the bake, as you can see here. Okay, so we went ahead and did the bake. And if you take a look, you're going to have uh, what looks like uh, nothing that happened on this piece of geometry here. If I go ahead and do shading hardware texturing, you can see that we do have something going on here in this piece of geometry, and it's that those colors have been baked into the actual piece. So here's the UVs. I'll go ahead and just move them out of the way. You can see what exactly got baked. Now, you will see certain weird artifacts maybe here, like here, but I would not worry about that. If, you would, if you're a little worried about that, you can always come in here and do some Photoshop work and... Uh, do specific selections of these reds here and, you know, uh, flood them to this color. Uh, but do not be alarmed. Everything is okay. Um, the just important fact is that you didn't have any overlapping UVs. Uh, this could be an issue. We'll see. Again, these are little things that you can kind of uh, deal with uh, along the line. But you can kind of see how we're going to be using these as masks per color to have certain materials on certain areas. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just undo this. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this piece of geometry. Because I, it's just good not to have two of them. I, I really just wanted the bake of the texture. That texture has currently been saved. It's good to go. Now we're going to move on to the next one. So again, you'll notice I have my transfer maps open here. So I don't have to, I just have to change out a couple things. So again, I can come here and say clear all, clear all for the target and the source mesh. Take this mesh here, say target, with this uh, mesh selected, hit control D. I currently have the second mesh selected that has been duplicated. I will click here and say add selected here. And at this point, I don't have to change anything in here except this name here, which in this case, this thing is called the tech wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it uh, a new name. So tech wall, and it's id.bmp. And then with that said, we'll hit bake and we'll again, we'll go get another cup of coffee. All right, so that one's done. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at it. As you can see, as I pull this out, if I turn off uh, shading hardware texturing, you can see this is the file itself that actually has the texture. So I can go ahead and just delete that one. Take this one, put this back to zero. I have all these uh, pieces of geometry zeroed out, by the way. I modify freeze transforms, edit delete by type history, making sure they're clean, pivot points kind of somewhere in the center there. All right, so that's another map, and let's finish this off with this last one here. Okay, so here I have my uh, mesh. I'm going to hit add selected, and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it and take a look in my outliner. So here's my support. I'm going to hit Command-D. I got my support uh, 1. Put that into the source. Again, it doesn't matter if one's up here or this one's below here. Just as long as they're not the same shape in uh, both target and source. So you just have just a duplicate on top of itself. And of course this is called the support. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this. Support. There we go. Okay, and we'll do our final bake. Again, one last third cup of coffee. All right, so that should be everything. Again, I'm just going to come in here, find the piece of geometry that is the uh, one with the texture, and I'll go ahead and get rid of that so that we only have three pieces in our scene. Uh, but the good news is, in the midst of all of this baking, we have these three wonderful maps that have been created that we will use in Substance Painter. VFX for Filmmakers proudly releases live action and CG integration using Redshift for Maya. Two amazing newcomers have shattered the visual effects market. Redshift Renderer, a lightning fast GPU based rendering engine, 
combined with Substance Painter, another revolutionary program that makes quick and fast photorealistic materials and textures. Now VFX artists and filmmaker enthusiasts can quickly and easily create the worlds they've always envisioned with speed and ease. In this comprehensive package covers the complete workflow from start to finish, from shot acquisition to lens distortion workflow, to tracking in Nuke, to export to Maya, to rebuilding materials and textures in Substance Painter, to re-importing to Maya, and finally rendering layer setups in Redshift. Not to mention a comprehensive composite in new covering beauty build fog, motion and depth of field blur, regrain, rotoscoping, AOV pass workflow, holograms, relight tool, touch up, as well as a whole slew of bells and whistles to sweeten the final shot. VFXforfilmmakers.com, the next evolutionary step for storytellers.